no wind. There is zero wind. It's like basically a glass out. <laughs> what are the chances? Poor old me, huh? Very smooth water motoring sailing day. <laughs> but it's still gonna be great because we're gonna go and spend the night and we've got a two days for the wind to pick up or one day for the wind to pick up, one full day, but an overnighter. Any other day I'd be dreaming of this low wind day. Still beautiful to be out. Let's get to an nice little anchorage, it doesn't matter. I needed to test how much our petrol the, the motor burnt anyway. I need to get proper charts on this thing. I need to get a proper sounder or a proper chart reader. That sail is at least copping a little bit of wind, which is good. So, it pushes along nicely, but the reality is, slim pickings, we're going with the tide at the moment, which is good as well. But that will change over this hour. Yeah, that little squall brought that tiny bit of wind, but I don't think it's gonna last just past a sandbar with those birds taken off. Couldn't have been more than say 20 or 30 meters away from the boat. And we're in 25, meter, or 25 feet of water, so there's plenty of water under me. But it makes you realize there's sandbars on either side. If you looked around just like this, you'd think that you're actually in nice deep water everywhere, wouldn't you? Be nice when I can actually turn the engine off and there's a bit of wind. We'll keep motoring up. We haven't gone very far yet. off for a second and see how we go I won't uh, solely just go off the um, so how nice is it with that motor off <laughs> I might just go off the head sail just for a little bit and just see what kind of time I'm making and then we'll just see uh, how much further we can get up this uh, <laughs> up this area before I have to maybe get the other sail out or get the motor back on because I'm not quite sure because I've never done this route I don't really know <laughs> what's gonna happen kind of thing so look let's see we'll see what kind of look we're going we're going probably four knots at the moment so that's pretty good with just one sail up but we're going to have to adjust our course and go through this gap down here down here in a second <laughs> all right guys so what's going down is we can i've let the sail out we've sort of got a bit of a downwind but the problem is we're now that we're fighting we're going to be fighting the current as soon as we turn up here which is exactly what's happening right now. Which is fine, we're still going uh, in between two to three knots, depending on whether you believe our Navionics, but it's gonna be slow going.
yeah it's a it's a confusing little one because now i'm sort of because the current's sort of slowly moving the boat over this way and the wind's trying to push it back this way now we're sort of getting this weird loop so it'll be interesting to see what happens when the current switches around and how close i get to these guys and if they swing around as well there's definitely some um learning going on so what is it there 9.3 feet i'd love to change this into offset yeah we won't change the offset feet no what if i hold that and then do that minimum feet Ugh. minimum feet max feet okay so it's in feet we know that <laughs> alarm deep alarm shell alarm Ugh, i'm gonna have to go try and look up the instructions on the interweb if i press and hold what happens lamps What's lamps? Anyway, we'll read the instructions on that. <laughs> Let's put the roof up so we can get cool. Oh, there's a bee on me. Where do you come from? Out. Get out. Uh, that should be enough. As long as I can clear the head height. <laughs> so, oh, it's much cooler all of a sudden. Now, bee friend. What are we doing with you? You, get on here. Come on. Oh. All right, just flick him out. Hopefully he can fly. <laughs> Good luck. All right, yeah, so I've got to admit, today is not quite turning out as I expected. Um, beautiful morning. Tried to get the drone up. You can see I've just chucked everything down here. Tried to get the drone up. Uh, we did manage to get it up, but then I don't know, I had some kind of login issue and um, because I wasn't logged in, it wouldn't let me fly more than 50 meters from the spot I launched it. So obviously because I was motoring along and trying to get shots and then it wouldn't follow me, I had to motor back to it instead of uh, it like flying it to me so I could catch it. So that was a bit of a spanner in the work. So I think I only got one tiny little shot in the end. Um, but we'll see if we, I don't know if I managed to make an intro or something out of it. I had, I had big plans in my head. But uh, I don't know if I pulled it off in the end. I've been doing heaps of work on the boat. Um, the last couple of days I've spent just going up and working at it at the slip and getting a whole stack of things done. Simple things like in one thing it lead to another. Obviously it's true what they say uh, that you know you just keep pouring money and time into it. There's a whole lot of fixing and very little sailing but I'm adamant that we're going to sort of try to get to the point now where we're doing more sailing. So we installed uh, a 12 volt plug and we also installed a USB plug um, and that's running through now properly. Um, I've got the fridge connected to here at the moment because that panel pumps in a lot more juice so during the day I just plug it in here for a little bit get it all down to temperature which brings me to the next thing. I bought a whole bunch of groceries today um, some of which I'll eat while I'm here, but most of it, it was just basically going to be, um, stuff that needs to be on the boat. Like, you know, uh, everything from cling wrap and aluminium foil and oil and flour, things that I'll always want on the boat anyway. Unfortunately, I'm starting to realize that the broadwater is sort of the kind of area you just want to motor, unless you've got like the perfect wind scenario, like it's coming directly behind you or even directly from the side where you've got some options to maneuver if something is on, if the boats or the canal sort of bins. Unless you've got that sort of perfect sort of scenario, I can see how the Broadwater isn't the best place to sail. So what we really need to do is get out into the ocean. So if I went further up and tried to sneak through some of the canals to get out to say North Stradbroke and Peel Island and all that sort of open water, unfortunately it really starts to shallow in some areas and because I haven't done it before, I don't know where I, whether I can sneak through or not. On the Navionics, some of the little sort of spots are saying like one meter, and I need at least 1.5 to get through with this boat. So, we're not going to risk it at dead low. At high tide, we could definitely do it, but I think uh, high tide was the first thing in the morning. This run up to this point, I reckon you could do it low tide, no problems. But the next run further up than that next leg, there's definitely parts where it thins out and I reckon you might run into some trouble. But the only way to find out is to actually do it and go a few different ways and try and suss one that works out. But uh, yeah, it's a slow process, but we are getting there. We brought the tender. I've been mucking around with the tender in the boat. So we will blow that up at some point and maybe go for a fish. We've got the motor on the back. 
I did do a lot of mucking around, hoisting the tender up on the back there, just with some ropes. I didn't use any pulleys at this stage. It's easy enough to pull up because it's light enough, but the problem is it gets stuck on the keel and the rudder, not the keel, it gets stuck on the uh, tiller and the rudder and you sort of have to kick it out with your foot and then once it's up there it's actually quite wide like it sticks out quite a lot and then it you need to sort of tilt it and once it's on its tilt then you can't see out the back at all so after all that mucking around i thought you know what it's just not worth it why don't we just tow it the real aim of the game today was just i just wanted to spend a night in the in the boat and just chill i just wanted to learn a few more things about anchoring up and and a couple of little sort of uh extra bits that I can pick up along the way and every time I do something I learned a little bit more so maybe the next trip we might try and actually motor up further and get up to North Stradbroke get some open water and do some nice big long runs sailing because right now I'm getting a bit frustrated that I can't sail but you know what everything I've done I've learned quite a bit here and there just even doing this trip up here today and just I feel a lot more comfortable now just getting to this spot um, from the launch spot because I just had no idea what to expect and there's sandbars everywhere like there really is sandbars everywhere if you don't follow your map or your chart you could definitely get in trouble very quickly <laughs> okay well I just came out to check out the anchor and we've got a bit of a problem I don't know exactly what's going on I've just tried to reverse a bit and go forward a bit because what's happened is I was looking at it thinking why is it wrapped under there and now we've swung around and we're facing another direction to everyone else it's obviously stuck on the bottom of the boat somehow there's two things i can do i can either just wait until the tide sort of stops going out and as soon as it starts coming in again hopefully it'll rectify itself or i can jump in and at least get an idea of what's going on it's really tight as well so it's obviously pulled really tight around the boat Hopefully it's not wrapped around the rudder. I guess I could just jump in and sort of have a look. I didn't really bring any, I got goggles and snorkel, but I didn't really bring the ones that have a mount or anything on. So I don't know if I can take you with me. I might just jump in here and, and see what happens. I'm not sure. How else could we do it? It's pretty much the only way to do it, isn't it? Jump in and check it out. It's not really what I want to be doing, but uh, we'll jump in see if we can uh see what's going on and uh i'll report back in a second <laughs> what a bummer maybe we'll turn this camera on maybe we can get some uh visuals of me falling in or exactly what I thought had happened it had wrapped around in between the rudder and the and the keel there's a small gap and it had obviously gone over it and it's lodged itself in there look at now it's nice and tight and out the way it should be now but um yeah it probably would have freed itself when it went loose and slack but because that tension was so great it was just stuck in that little knot there's only about that much gap before the, it attaches to the actual bottom of the rudder by the looks of things Oh, well, it was nice to see the bottom there, <laughs> but not ideal. Not the way I really wanted to go down. Glad I brought those. They were handy. <laughs> Stop it, anchor rope. You keep making me nervous. I'll be happy when this tide changes and I'll get a better picture of what's going down. 
but I guess it's going to happen in the middle of the night as well so it's a good test it's a bizarre isn't it it's because we're so close to shore getting this sort of weird push the winds pushing us out the tides pushing me back and so the anchor is just <laughs> straight out that way when the big gusts come it pushes me closer to the rope like now and then it straightens back out but it's uh yeah it's a bit of a bizarre one but i'm facing the same way as everyone else so it's obviously happening to everyone else so i guess we should probably put this groceries away and then pack all this stuff up here it's bizarre i'm so not used to having like such a like a living area and such a permanent kind of thing so once I get all these groceries in and start to think about, I'm gonna to have to come up with good ideas like so things don't just get thrown around the cabin. But um, yeah, I'm not used to having such an amazing little sort of, a caravan basically is what it is. It's like a floating caravan, isn't it? I'm not used to having so many sort of storage areas and little things, everything. I've just got to slowly find spots for everything and um, work it out as I use it because I can put as much thought as I want in I can try and I try and put as much thought into everything but in reality you don't really learn anything until you're actually out doing it so I think it's uh yeah it's now now's the time to learn a lot before I get into some uh pretty more serious water <laughs> anyway put these groceries away and uh start figuring out little hidey holes for everything so I flushed the water tank out uh, recently and flushed it numerous times I had to just pump it all out all the water all together and uh, flushed the tank tanks out a few times just to make sure they're good to drink from but what happened is as I was moving it around and flushing and I was like man this this drain just does not drain properly so I went down here and I lifted the whole top up and as I lifted it it cracked the uh, drain pipe and the and it was just it was so corroded that it, it like cracked all the way through and i had to basically replace this pipe so <laughs> there's just been endless jobs um and just new things popping up eggs can go in here butter can go in here yeah garlic and then we'll pick up plastic bags we need garbage bags and different things like that so at home, figuring out little spots for everything. Tabasco. Gotta have Tabasco. Wasabi. Always use wasabi. Leave it out for now, but that eventually that'll make its way into the fridge. Salt, pepper, soy. All the essentials. Yeah, all of that stuff might be. It might be really stupid to put it all up there. We might need some proper containers to maximise the use of that space. And then we'll obviously start using this space down here as well. But, that's pretty much all we brought really. Okay. Well, now that the anchor's playing up and I'm paranoid about getting, getting it stuck, and the catamaran that was there has left, so that's a better spot, I think, for tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to find out how much anchor rope I actually really do have by measuring out the rope so let's find a meter where's a meter huh. you know what's funny from here from here to here is exactly a meter so we'll use that tape and we'll tape uh, a couple of marks on it how good would it like an automatic winch be very fancy. <laughs> it falls in a lot easier once you change in. Oh, and you'll notice that I've moused all the uh, shackles, and I got rid of the I got rid of the um, the swivel as well at that end. Just one more shackle to go wrong, I guess. So that's 10 meters there. So we'll put a mark every 10 meters, eh? Hopefully this tape stays on. If not, we'll, we'll figure out a better way. Maybe we can thread some wool. And a mate of mine was saying that they would get a needle and thread some bits of wool or some kind of material just through some nylon kind of thread through. We'll start with this. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, that is the end. So it turns out we have about 40 meters of rope. So not 50, 40. Which is, 50 is usually pretty much the bare minimum. Well, they usually say, what, 50 meters of chain. But I've got 10 meters of chain and about 40 meters of rope. So in total, I've got about 50 meters. But uh, yeah, that's um, only just scraping it in. Like it's, that's what they say. They say minimum 14 inch, or they say 12 mil rope and uh, six mil to eight mil chain. But I spoke to a few other people and they said, well, in the, on the East Coast, generally you should be all right with about 50 meters. Um, ideally you want all chain, but I don't have all chain. <laughs> and I don't, uh, I don't really feel like forking over another um, sort of maybe 600 bucks to go all chain and then having to drag the chain up at the moment. So I'll, I'll run with rope for now and we'll, we'll readdress that at some point soon, maybe. So we've marked out uh three points so that's 30 meters so of uh marks and then we know when we get to the end well then we're uh yeah we're at about 40 meters so we're about 50 meters out cool all right well let's feed it back in that was well worth the effort now at least i know what i'm dealing with a little bit fiddly this thing isn't it but it does go down okay now Another job sort of done. Okay. What are we going to do this? Just get it up. Here we go. Oh, God. It's directly under the boat again. Why are you doing these things? <laughs> when are we just going to swing? <laughs> kind of patting myself into a corner here. <laughs> Alright. Well, she's pumped up. So at least we now we know that maybe yeah we just put it sideways on and this the idea is to get it in the water. We can't really stow it up here. But if we did it sideways it'd pump up no problems. How long have we got? It's pretty long. Let's just get this on it first. Hopefully, well this rope is plenty strong enough because you can tow a whole bunch of adults around on a tube. So it should be ideal for towing and it floats, which is good. So it won't get caught in anything, unlike my anchor. <laughs> See you later, boat. Looks like she's gonna float over that way. Works for me. Hey, Boaty! It's Boaty McBoatface. <laughs> How's that Boaty McBoatface? And then they, 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 they won the competition with Boaty McBoatface and then they chickened out and called the research vessel like the Sir David Attenborough or something. <laughs> and then they called the submarine Boaty McBoatface. <laughs> As a happy compromise. <laughs> okay. So, when we're towing, we want these lines to come out somewhere about yay distance. So, I might put a, a little tie point in here. Right there. Can you tow right? Oh, look, she spun around nicely as well. How good's that? I probably should be going towards the shore though, shouldn't I? Oh. 
actually rose quite well this thing. Speed! out get all those knots closer together just pulling from the right spot beauty okay so we just tighten this one and we should be good okay Yeah, that, that's good, because it is working, I and mean, then if I pull it from this side, if it comes to the see that one slackens up and that pulls, and then it tightens up in the center again. That is going to work. Backwards. Stack of weed. Yeah, you might as well. I'd usually do yourself plastic, but we've got this lure on here. Might as well have a couple of casts with that first. You never know. Fuddies will hit this for sure. Come on. Let's make it real easy for me. Let's get a floody straight off the bat and go and eat it. We can call this a beautiful day. Trolling might actually be not a bad idea as well here. We'll get pushed in first. Come on, big floody. Having kill. I reckon you'd be on the money because they just come out at night and hang out. Tell you what though, it'd probably get bitten by midges pretty hardcore. That is raining. No. a bit of a fail on a few, but still we still had fun once we get out into the ocean we'll have these fired up with overheads on them Something where we can just crank, crank down and get the fish in. That would work just fine there though. Beauty, it's looking more like a fishing boat already. <laughs> we should fix that one as well, I guess. Hey guys, can I help you? Cool ducks. They definitely, look, they're definitely used to being getting fed. Hey mate. Fight the current. <laughs> hey, I was even looking. Oh, the yeah, skis. <laughs> Move to the next boat, huh? Yeah. No, I think we've ticked a lot of boxes off. We've got a lot of stuff done. 
and I think after this little amount of testing I think I'm confident to do a proper trip now and just get sailing all the other niggly things I've worked out to a point now where I think I can handle it it was good to get the timing and the petrol sort of down and now I know sort of how long it's going to take to get up to that next leg or roughly anyway and then from that point on we hit some bigger open more open water I think it's going to be a very a successful kind of uh, purchase in the end. I think it's like, it's bizarre. It's like, because you get so many guys, and I did think about, like, say, decking out the four-wheel drive and, and doing it that way. But the reality is, I don't know. I just, there's something about sailing that just draws me to it. I'd prefer to be on the ocean if I can somehow do it that way. Plus, hey, this sailboat costs probably a fraction of what, I think my sailboat, my whole sailboat probably costs as much as, you know, a couple of the drawers that some people put on their, <laughs> on their four-wheel drive and a couple of tyres. So, yeah, no, like it's probably a better way for me to go and in that respect as well. But I think this has a lot more scope, I think, moving forward. Once I get better at it, I can, I can go anywhere, mate. Like, I don't, I don't know if I will go everywhere, <laughs> but uh, the more as my confidence grows, I think I'm, yeah, I think the journeys will only get more ambitious, maybe. Mosquitoes are moving in in a big way, so we might have to lock this properly. Thought could we could get away with having it open, but I don't think so. There's too many coming in already. There you go. Ooh, they can get through here. Anyway, we've got our ankle light on. See you in the morning. Particularly nice morning, if we can just put this right here. Come on, balance. All right. Oh look, there's a kangaroo there. <laughs> kangaroo just jumping across there. <laughs> He's cool. See you bud. Well, that was a very reasonable sleep. I uh I only woke up a few times, um, just thinking about the anchor, but um, apart from that, like it's very comfortable, obviously here was very, I think it slows down to a no wash zone here uh, on either side. Hey, that kangaroo just jumped in the water. He's going for a swim, maybe I can get a better shot of him. He's pretty far away now, but maybe we can get a better shot on the phone because it's got a zoom lens. They swim more often than you think. Look, he's going right out as well. Look at him. Had <laughs> a good old swim, mate. Is he coming back out? I'll try and get a shot of him when he comes back out. But, yeah, no, this, uh, this anchor app here worked really well. Um, what was it called again? <laughs> Can't remember what it's called. Anchor Pro. Oh, he's got out. Ah, oh, look, I oh, missed it. He's jumping off into the bush. No, he's, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, Anchor Pro. I think, yeah, as soon as I started using it last night, I realised, because I'd never used it before, I just downloaded it before I left. Um, 
if you set the anchor, so I can cancel it now, but you can see it's telling me that I've deviated 11.4 meters from where originally I marked it. So I've remarked it a few times last night because when I first marked it, obviously as I was at full stretch out in one direction, and then what you should do is mark it as soon as you drop the anchor. So it gives you a circumference uh, in an area where you can travel within, and if you leave that circle, uh, no matter where you swing, it will sound an alarm. So it definitely sounded an alarm when the boat swung around last night, it swung around and the alarm went off, which was actually good because it made me, first of all, realize how it works and how it sounds and whether it would wake me up. And But it was perfect because then I stuck my head out of the hatch and I was having a look around. And um, yeah, and I could see the other guy's lights and I could see where I was at and um, and go, okay, no, I'm, I'm safe, I've swung around. And it was perfect because two times throughout the night, the alarm went off, it woke me up at the perfect times to know when the tide was changing and, and things were happening. So I got to quickly check. So it was the fastest and best way for me, bar just staying up all night, to check at those important points uh, when things were gonna happen and change. So yeah, no, that worked really well. And if I'd set the anchor point in the center and I'd set the swing to say 30 meters, it would have been the perfect setup. I know if I'm starting to drag or I've swung around a funny way, I can check and uh, yeah. cook. Right, come on bro, can we name the tender? I guess we should probably give it some kind of name. <laughs> He's coming along nicely. unfortunately. 